This is uh, Ronnie with Everything Vive. I'm here with Damon, and we are going to be, it's kind of long been overdue for us as far as uh, recording a normal a normal podcast. We've done a little, you know, I've, I've done a few solo uh, episodes here and there on, on oh. random games, and I know we've done some interview stuff, but uh, yeah, behind the scenes we've been working on a few things, and we wanted to at least get an episode out there um, to kind of talk to you guys about what's some of that stuff. So anyways, uh, Damon, how, how have you been lately? What have you been up to? I've been great. I almost cut in when you said a few, you <laughs> did like, you did like 14 episodes, uh, back to back, but they're all, they're all great interviews. I'm a big, I like the interviews. I like talking to developers. I like hearing you and Zane and everybody talk to developers. I like especially VR developers and talk about how they made stuff, but I, I've been doing great. I, I I'm good. I, um, uh, we have a fourth girl that's going to be coming at the end of October, so that's pretty exciting. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to get a full volleyball team set up. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, everything's good here in uh, hot Miami, and uh, it's great. I I have not ha- I never have enough time to play games. Never, there's never enough time. No, nope. but uh, I'm definitely making time, and I'm excited to be sitting down and talking with you and our listeners today. Awesome. Well, yeah, on that note, I guess if we want to get right to it, there have been some, a few random things in the news that we've been wanting to talk about, and most of these are actually pretty recent, uh, but they're all, you know, important. So I guess the first one, because I think it'll be a little bit quicker, is the fact that Viveport is now opening up its its service to Rift owners. And yeah, I, I don't know what your initial thoughts on that were. I, I, for one, was super excited just to see that, you know, that the Vive brand is opening itself up to multiple headsets. You know, you, you hear word verbiage like that from Oculus saying, you know, we're not into exclusives. We are just into the VR platform in general thriving, but, you know, not a whole lot, you know, you know, you still see them kind of locking down a lot of exclusives for that platform. And Vive was kind of doing the same, but this is kind of the first move I saw on the, on the Vive end of things to, to acknowledge that they're, you know, in support of multiple headsets other than just the Vive and the Vive Pro. It's, I agree 100%. And it's one of those things where like, it's almost their motivations. It doesn't, you know, are their motivations, their motivations could be anything. And until you ask them directly, their motivations could be like uh, what they were saying where uh, it's double the user base. It's mm-hmm. twice as many people that can use the products. It'll help the developers out. It's twice as many uh, uh, customers that might buy the the games of our developers. So we're helping the developers out. It's it's fulfilling our promise for an open environment. It's um, putting pressure on a competitor. There's there's a, a billion different ways to look at it, but I don't know. It, on its face, it, it is sticking to the idea of an open platform or mm-hmm. i mean devil, everything is devil's advocate like vive port when it got started it was a i mean i don't know why you want to describe it when it first came out it was it was i tried to use it for maybe a day maybe a week and i just and this was 2016 so this is really early on mm-hmm. vive port was and everywhere you look it was a train wreck basically and i it's just the only way to describe it it was buggy you, I mean, I had, I did, I was lucky enough not to have blue screens with it, but I taught tons of reports of people that say it slowed down my system. It's, it's worse mm. than any virus I've ever had. Mm. Glitchy, uh, you know, and then the content was, it was like, I get to install this thing, this blue screen generator and it's glitchy and there's not much on it and I get to pay for it. Like it was, it, there wasn't a big, huge value prospect. So mm. yeah, now, for me, yeah. No, go ahead. Now, though, yeah, but now there's a lot more on it. There's a lot more titles on it. I have since put it, installed it for you know all of a couple of days, tried it out maybe a couple months ago. It's a completely different. I think from the ground up, it's completely different. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that I don't know. Is did they poison the waters of the HTC Vive owners and say, well, you know, we've rewritten the whole thing. I don't think we're going to get them on board, so let's just go ahead and open it up to rift owners and see what happens mm-hmm. i don't know if you go in the in the subreddit for oculus like there's a lot of hate for steam vr like there's a lot of guys that are like i don't do anything on steam vr it's it's yeah janky, which is crazy to crap. me yeah 
That's. Mm. I mean, th- there's. I mean, there's some fluidity and simplicity to the Oculus Store, especially once you're like used to just putting the headset on and just navigating it from from the headset itself. But I yeah, mean, I'm it's actually. Qu- it's quick. It's yeah, quick. I, I'm actually though the opinion. I mean, like a lot of what you were explaining about running Viveport on your system as a dual headset or a dual HMD owner, I've actually had just as many problems uh, dealing with with Oculus software running in, in the background on my computer as as like the Viveport stuff ever caused me. Like with Viveport, like I agree it was kind of annoying, you know, on boot up sometimes and it would, you know, pop up and that sort of thing. But at least if I really needed to, I could close it out and it wouldn't really bother me after that. But yeah. But for me, the Oculus stuff would always load itself up no matter which headset I was using. And still does. Yeah, still does. it still does. And like, I know Pretty people, much. people, you know, create shortcuts and like little, little executables to, to control, all, like to, to, to force quit some of the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. background processes and stuff. I mean, I usually just open up task, you know, the task menu and just like, you know, yeah just find all the Oculus stuff and, and cancel it out of there. But still, like, I'll have to restart several times and this and that until I actually get my, well, like, whichever headset I'm trying to get working, working. Yeah. Like, having both of these installed sometimes give you annoying problems, right? And just that... I think, I think we're both unique in that because I, I don't know if I've said it on the show, but, yeah, I have both. I have a Rift and I have... And I've only had a Rift, I don't even know how long. I've, I've maybe four months or five months maybe. I, yeah. I don't know. But since this... November 2016, I've had a Vive, so that's all yeah. I knew for a long time. But yeah, living with both headsets, living with both, there is some times where, and you're there's some times where there's some pain, like trying to go back and forth between the two. Um, and there's some stuff that I absolutely 100% love on my Vive, and then there's stuff that, yeah, I don't, I, I know that I don't like playing certain stuff, certain mm-hmm. games on my vive i like playing them on my rift and vice versa there's mm-hmm. definitely i definitely have some of that and then i have hardware like gun stocks that only work with the vive that mm-hmm. uh, you know and games that i play just there but robo recall do i play robo recall through revive now that i have a rift no i play it with yeah i play it with my rift and i play it with the touch controllers yeah i think that. i think overall the problem is just having multiple i mean as much as you want to see competition among storefronts and like the vive port specifically for me at least at least I see like a, a value there as far as like they offer a subscription model, and so yeah. it's it's different than what you would uh, be able to do from the Oculus Store or even Steam. And so for that reason, like I I see value there um, having a separate store. But like in general, it I think it's frustrating for any user to have to deal with multiple stores on a single device and kind of navigating. Like like yeah. for for me, I got used to Steam VR from the beginning. And so for me, having to deal with the Oculus Store is annoying because I just want to run everything through Steam. Whether I'm using my Rift or, or my Vive, it doesn't matter. Like I just personally prefer to, to lo- usually load things off of my desktop and then put the headset on. And I yeah. don't do a whole ton of switching from inside. And then, yeah. But then when I, when I do start switching inside, it is kind of annoying to have to figure out, like in my Rift, for example... Um, what the fastest or easiest way is to get back to Steam VR rather than, you know, the default Oculus Home or like yeah. vice versa. Like oh, like it, oh, yeah, yeah. it, yeah. it when, like not saying like I'm sure there's like a specific uh, you know, button that you press or a specific order that you should do things in to make sure you always get to the same spot. But like for me I'm just usually like pressing whatever but like menu button comes to yeah. mind first and like, oh wait, I'm in Oculus Home but I wanna go to Steam VR or like vice versa. And so like, and, and for me, like Oculus as smooth as it is, like being in the store in the headset, I feel like on the desktop, the it's, it's very simple, like almost to the point where like, if anything's going wrong, I don't really know what to do or like, and, and, and likewise in the headset, it's really easy to get around in it. But then like it, it almost feels like things are because everything's big and obvious that they can't fit enough where you want it. And, and sometimes I can't find like things right away. Like it takes like scrolling through the store to purchase something, for example, is kind of a nightmare. I think when you're in the headset, like, but 
Do you have problems? Uh, this is a sidetrack, but in Steam VR, when you pull up your menu of games, does the scroll on the touchpad still not work? Because yeah, for me, it doesn't work. And, and like, Steam, I, right? Yeah, and Steam. Yeah, it's it's so actually. Isn't that Steam when, insane? It's 2018, and the scroll on the touchpad still doesn't work. Like, yeah, I, I swear it used to work. I may be crazy, but 2017 summer, yeah, I was scrolling with my thumb, and then all of a sudden they're like, "No, you shall not." It's actually really funny you mentioned that because even on the desktop, for some reason, like, like scrolling in my library is perfectly normal, but if I go on the on the store page on Steam, for yeah. some reason, like the scroll, like scrolling, even on the what? main page is like what? screwed up. What does Valve have against scrolling? <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. Uh, no. This is yeah. This is a big. This I feel a lot of the same exact same things when I'm going back and forth between stores, trying to remember which menu button gets me to the to my my home or core 2.0, and then which one gets me to the Steam VR menu, and then so I mean, that's what that's for me. I I kind of know when I go into a session. Okay, I'm gonna be playing, you know whatever game I'm going to be playing. If I'm playing Onward, it's going to be in my Rift, so I don't even have to think about it. I know that I'm closing down all my Oculus stuff. But if I'm playing a bunch of stuff... And or you mean the Vive, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 If I'm, if I'm, I'm, I'm going to be in the Vive. Uh, I'm going to be in Steam VR. I'm, I'm going to close down all the Oculus stuff in the background. I'm going to play you know, Onward or Pavlov or something like that. Um, but if I'm going to do a flight simulator... I actually play with my Rift because it's just lighter. It's 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 sure. it's easier to get on and off. There's a lot of like take my thing off, take my uh, headset off, look at the keyboard. Okay, remember. Okay, I want to add this into a control on my Hotas and all that all that junk. Yeah. Same thing with Lead, Lead Dangerous. Like, I, it's a trade off. Yeah. So there's a lot of a lot of those like which is which is whatever. I, I have first world problems, I know, but <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. I, I th we don't know their reasons, and until we're with Daniel and O'Brien and, and and Troy with HTC, and we can sit down and talk to him and say, you know, why did you open it up? Like, seriously, why'd you, why did you open it up? Um, your, is it, and the question is too, a better question is for Oculus. Like now that Viport opened itself up, why not? Why not 2019 be the year that Oculus opens its store? They have the sales, they have yeah. the youth base. Um, we could finally just, you, there's a whole, you know, an entire another half of, uh, VR users that I think I think they would be receptive. I think it's. Uh, it I mean, is, it works technically now with Revive, so good. it's yeah, pretty much. But, no, I'm not. I'm not saying it's fluid, okay. but I'm saying like I'm saying the fact that they didn't really do anything to shut that down tells you at least that they're that they don't care think, so much that some people are out there playing stuff on the Vive. Yeah, I think Knuckles. I think Knuckles, if it ever comes out in our lifetime will be the thing that it's like this is just a natural using the the oculus uh, store and using the oculus interface you know with my vibe with knuckles it's going to be it's going to be pretty close and i, I that's my hope is that Dude, when knuckles comes out, that actually kinda, make, it gives me a, a, an interesting i wonder no but knuckles would have to it'll have to be be tracked with with the uh with with the base stations Oh, that, you mean, like, you, use your knuckles with your riff, that kind of thing. Yeah, that would have been awesome. I just I, for I, a split totally second, doable. I, I thought it's like doable. I think yeah. it's doable because you just take your headset, you put it on the desk, you make sure it's on so that it talks to the knuckles, so that they talk, and because the, the headset. But then I don't know. I know the wands will want to communicate with the with your headset. Yeah. Um, and vice versa, and some other stuff going on there. Yeah, I, I, I don't I'm know talking if it about, would actually talking work. Rear end, but I know you have to have the headset plugged in and working to get the wand, uh, Vive wands to work as, as they are without plugging in or having an additional dongle. Yeah. Because I know that when guys do uh, mixed reality stuff, they'll have their two wands and then they'll have a third one or they would use a third wand and they had to have a another dongle to track that Steam VR wand or they had to plug it in manually. Mm. So I mean I anything's know. possible. I, though. Like if cool. Valve wanted it to work, they could find a way to make it work. But it sounds like yeah, uh -huh. I mean it does use different tracking technology, so I I kind of have a feeling, man, but who knows. We'll yeah, see. We'll see. Maybe maybe dozens of people <laughs> from the Rift uh, will join Viport and subscribe to it, but <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, no, I mean, either way, like, if and if you think about it from this point of view, like, Vive only has to gain from, you know, becoming more entrenched in the VR world. And and for the most part, they've kind of doubled down on location-based and kind of more, you know, 
uh, like less consumer level. I mean, the Vive Pro, for example, I mean, really doesn't seem like their main focus was, you know, the, the end like home user. It was more, more professional type, type workloads. And Viveport really is the main, is, is, it seems like the company's main push at this point to, to bring stuff home and, and bring some kind of a service to consumers. And so obviously it has like a lot of room to grow, but um, making that a service that's open to everyone is definitely a good thing. Cause yeah, I mean, I would love to see Oculus be more open, especially on their storefront. But I mean, they've, at this point, they've kind of taken the Apple approach to their hardware and software and they really don't have any, I don't think they have much of an incentive. It seems like, like, whereas Vive, I'm sure wants to be as profitable as possible. It seems like right now Oculus is, you know, kind of playing with house money from Facebook. They're not really yeah. like soup. They're more looking at the future rather than, which is great. I mean, like I'm super excited about Santa Cruz and I'm super excited. Like I think a lot of innovation in the future, especially hardware wise, as far as like getting VR to do things that it can't do today, foveated lenses and all this kind of, you know, extra cool stuff. It seems like a lot of that's going to first come from, from Oculus and kind of filter its way down maybe. Whereas, but yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I, I'd we'll be see. curious. I, I can't wait to, you know, valve is such closed doors about what they're working on. Like they're, they're just as interesting when they're, when they're working hard on, on solving cool problems like this. So, you know, we've seen what, what they're kind of working on as far as controllers. Um, but I wonder what they're working on as far as like future headsets and that sort of stuff. So who knows? Yeah. Could but no, never. it's, it could be never, we could never see it or it could come out next month. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it is. Yeah. Whatever. This is, this was good news for me just because, I mean, you mentioned yeah. the same thing. I, I own both headsets. Like, honestly, I just want to be able to play VR and the best, in most, you know, convenient ways possible, and and being able to to use your 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 libraries on both. I mean, it, it gives you more incentive. Like like with a Viveport subscription now, I don't have to worry about only playing with one headset. That makes things easier for me. And I, I know a lot of de- developers. Like there probably aren't as many consumers out there that have multiple headsets. But I mean, even 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 now, I mean, still VR is somewhat of a you know. Uh, an early adopter, you know, kind of crazies, uh, you know, realm at this point yeah. still. Like we're still, I think it's going to take the Santa Cruz's of the world, the, the the powerful standalone devices to to bring more and more people into the fold. So, I mean, my point was that right now there's, I, I wonder what the percentage is of, of, of high-end VR users that have multiple headsets. I bet you it's it's higher than than you would think. Just because um, I know up until not too long ago, our friends at uh, VR Roundtable, they all have multiple headsets. And yeah. the, the youngest guy that's on the show, uh, he's been in VR forever and he has like he has every, you know, every developer kit from uh, that Oculus put out. He has the Rift. He has a, I think he has I think he has pretty much everything. Yeah. So it's if you're in it. I don't know. It feels like everybody that's in it went, once it got to four hundred bucks, yeah. And I was able to. Get, I uh, I saw recently um, what is it? It was it three fifty plus the Marvel pack. I mean, that's that's three fifty is that's. I, I don't see it going any lower than that. But I mean, that's a that's a yeah. pretty. No, and with price to get into VR, and with the window like mixed reality headsets and stuff out there are dirt cheap, and I yeah, know yeah. I know some people that have those, and yeah, I mean it's easy. Like I, I mean, right now, hundred someone was just asking me recently that was like I I was doing a VR session with a bunch of family, and people again were just like it's like every time I bring out the VR, they're just like man, like they always want want to buy one, but then yeah. the answer to that question for the the average person that has no idea what a computer is, it gets a little complicated, right? And like, or they have a like they have a potato from nineteen ninety seven or yeah. two thousand four. Oh, or, oh or, this or person was a had a, this person has a brand new MacBook Pro, and they're like, Kit, will it run oh, with my okay. MacBook Pro?" And I was yeah, like, "And yeah. eh, let me look at the specs." And yeah, it has like a you know an Intel GPU. So I was like, "No, it's probably not going to work for you." Sorry. Um, yeah. But like, but yeah, but the point is like. The computer was the problem, not the price of the Rift. 
So like, yeah. like they were curious, like at the time we just happened to be using a Rift, like sometimes I bring the Vive over or whatever, they're always interested. And yeah, this time they were like, oh, the, is the Rift cheaper than the Vive? Like how much is it? And when they looked at the price, they weren't put back by the price at all. Like they were like, wow, it's only oh. 400 bucks. That's not bad. On um, well, some hobbies, four hundred bucks is nuts. Is it is a one club? Like oh, that's yeah. what I always was telling people about. Like you go play golf. There's people that four hundred dollars is a golf club. Yeah. Like that's not a. They're not. Or that's a golf club plus, eighteen holes. Like yeah. Or scuba diving where, a, a mask it will run you two three hundred dollars. Yep. And and fins. There's so many hobbies out there. And uh, that's what. So like I mean I a lot of us. Planes. I have a friend that flies planes. You talk about. Four hundred dollars is nothing. Yeah, it's it's gone in in an instant. So as far as hobbies go, I feel, you know, four hundred dollars to on something that, if I had my way, I would play every day, hours and hours a day. It's I get that much enjoyment out of it. So for four hundred bucks, or with the Vive was five hundred bucks uh, right now, I I think it's totally worth it. Now the yeah. computer side of it, that's a bigger. That's what when you don't have one already, then that that's yeah of the PC uh, side. <laughs> uh, that was nice. the, uh, the segue. Um, did you, I'm sure you saw the news about NVIDIA. I watched live um, the CEO. I always I always murder his Jensen, name. Jensen Jensen Wong. Jensen Wong. Um, who I mean, how many? He's got a lot NVIDIA. of NVIDIA. So it, w- let's let's say yeah. So so for he's those a motorcycle who, jacket guy, I, he's got a he's got to have a hundred motorcycle jackets. Cause I, I think it's the same one. <laughs> no way. Um, yeah. No. 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 But yeah, so I watched this thing, and yeah, the the new RTX line of cards they've announced from finally. Nvidia. So yeah, you didn't you didn't actually. So the headline is yeah at uh, at uh, Gamescom, Nvidia did uh, you know a press conference, or I, I think they called it like a, a a games. What did they call it? Like a, a celebration of games or something? I don't know. It was basically a get, press conference. Get your wallets ready, boys. Like, yeah. It was, yeah, basically. And they announced uh, their new line of GPUs that are going to come out. And yeah, it, it's funny. He started it like, because I, I watched it too. And and I also actually mentioned some of my like first impressions on one of the live streams that I did the, later that day. Um, but yeah, he. I, I just thought it was funny that he started off the, the press conference by basically saying that there were so many rumors out and none of them were true. And, and he basically like kind of joke, like he didn't joke. He said, yeah, we're, we're here to announce the GTX 1180. And, and then he said, yeah, there's tons of rumors out there, more rumors than we've ever seen, but you know, none of them are true, blah, blah, blah. And then, and then he went on, you know, throughout that press conference to basically confirm everything that had been out. <laughs> Cause in oh, the yeah, days yeah. prior, like people had meant, people had found out about, you know, the RTX stuff. They had found out about, you know, it was most yeah, likely yeah. going to be the 20 series. At that point, what do you talk, what's your reveal? Like, yeah, yeah. So, so like, but I mean, he can, he confirmed, you know, what a lot of those rumors were and then, and then went into depth on the ray tracing stuff, which like I, I went to GDC. So I actually saw when they had first announced the ray tracing stuff, like on the more the, the pro end. And they were talking yeah. about like some of the work that they were doing with Microsoft for DirectX ray tracing and all that kind of stuff. Um, but this is, yeah, the first time that they are officially bringing it over to the consumer side of things. And then they announced the cards. And yeah, like you said, the crazy prices. I mean, I have, I have plenty of thoughts right now. We're still a little bit premature because, you know, the cards, they're, they're up for pre-order now, but they don't actually, they're not actually getting to people's hands until... I want to say even reviewers that are getting hardware early don't get it till I, I want to say just like a week or so before the actual release. Like the release itself, the cards are coming out on September 20th. And at this point, it's only going to be the RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti. Yeah. They announced the 2070, but the 2070 isn't going to be available um, until a few months out. Like they haven't, I, I want to say I heard like maybe November or December ish, but like I, I don't even think I think, I read, I, think I read the same. I read the yeah. same. And the biggest thing I, I was I had the same all the same thoughts when I watched the stream. And but my my biggest shock was not once was VR mentioned in the in, in the yeah. entire not, not once, which yeah. um, even though I, they're using the new port, like it's confirmed they, that they, they, have, they have the have new a, yeah, they have a new port, port on there that specifically no, for there, VR. Yeah, there's no headsets uh, that we know of right now, but of course in the future. Um, and then the other thing was there's no, there was no actual benchmarks like here's a game 
And so here's what, here's what it runs on on a 1080 Ti. And I will say here's they, what it runs on the new one. I on will say yeah. I will say I think he mentioned VR once, but it was like if you if you stopped to like cough, you missed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it was just, I, it was. He it was mentioned dumb. that there's something in the architecture that helps with foveated rendering, like yeah. But but like he didn't give any specifics, and honestly, yeah. at this point, like like even this ray tracing stuff, like until I see it actually implemented in games, and like how much they're implementing it and everything, I have no like I have bought like for the ten series, they did a great job of showing the 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 performance gains between the nine series and the ten series in normal games. So so like on that end, their presentation when they were releasing the ten series was head and shoulders above this this one. They just like said they, this was what we have now and here's the new stuff and here's the difference. But, like that's kind of yeah, been the standard. But, but, right? but here's the thing though. So so with that ten series, when they when they released the ten series, they compared it to the nine series. They showed like the, the graphs, whatever. But then like as far as feature sets go they focus a lot of time on like two main things from what I remember. This is on the 10 series launch. Yeah. They focused on voxel rendering and they focused on, on multi projection for VR. And they claimed, they claimed at the time that if you're going to get double the performance in VR because you can multi project, meaning, you know, you can run two passes basically and not have to, to yeah. actually like use the, like you're not re-rendering the scene twice for each eye. You're essentially rendering it once and then creating viewpoints for each for each eye. And then and then the other thing that they and then like I said that voxel lighting stuff and they had like you know an Nvidia tech demo which granted like this time at least they had third party developers bringing titles that are going to come out with ray tracing implemented. But like the reason I bring this up is because as far as I can tell, like even as a VR user. I upgraded to the 10 series, but the reason I did that was because um, because moving from SLI 980 Ti's to a 1080 Ti was very advantageous for my my VR type. Just because I was moving from two GPUs to one GPU. Exactly, exactly. And you sold those, and they still had a considerable yeah, value. Yeah, but like the point was, able, it wasn't the, as big of a jump. Unfortunately, you know, I, as far as I can tell, I don't really think that a lot of that like multi projection double the performance stuff really came into play that like like I don't really I don't I don't think that a 1080 that I don't think that a that a 980 Ti was being doubled in performance or more by a 1080 for example like just because of the 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 projection so I could be wrong I, I haven't done the benchmarks but like I didn't see like like uh four times performance increase when I moved from two 980 yeah. Ti's to a 1080 Ti. I saw the, the normal performance increase that you get from not having to worry about SLI not functioning in VR, right? And, and, and likewise with the pixel stuff, like with the voxel stuff, all the voxel-based lighting stuff, like that supposedly the 1080, the 10 series was going to do so well, like that didn't really show up in anything that I can think of. And so like, so it's it's interesting that like I mean in the past Nvidia has showed has focused on these kind of really cool new thing feature like Ansel and all they've these things. They've done that for that they, long, forever, right? I mean, if but then always, they're never that important. Like, well, they just they just don't get everybody to. I think, I think what I read from other developers is they come out with some hardware based solution for a problem, or they invent a problem, or say this this you can do this much faster and here's this hardware like physics or something yeah. like that and then somebody says oh but you know if you do this software trick over here you don't need your hardware and it runs the same or better yeah and then all the developers go well i'm not going to just code for something that is only going to be found on an nvidia card i've got all these other cards to worry about um you know on the ati side so amd yeah <laughs> or sorry amd yeah uh i have you know all this i'm going to be cutting myself in half or whatever yeah. i'll just use the software trick because it's free, and it'll work on both. So yeah. I think they uh, that happens kind of over and over again. A lot is common. So yeah, and at this point if, too, you're even talking about running on old NVIDIA cards versus new NVIDIA cards. <laughs> like if if you're trying well, to like like I'm just saying like like I would imagine in six months there's still going to be a lot more owners of NVIDIA 10 series cards than 20 series cards. So like as a developer, how much really effort are you going to put forward like in the short term? 
to yeah, exactly, exactly. to taking even, care taking even advantage shooting of for only. a ten seventy. If you say, "Oh, I want to make the minimum ten seventy, you're shooting yourself in the foot. You're yeah. that's insane. Like if, as far as a pancake gamer, you're going to have to shoot a lot lower for your minimums to even consider a, a larger swath of people, unless you're building a game that is something that is like a you know a benchmark game that yeah. is going to push everything. But that's funny you say that because if you if you go on eBay now, I, I've been just for fun looking on eBay and see guys are dumping their cards pretty left and right. Like but that always t- happens at yeah, launches yeah, it's, just because yeah. like, I, I agree. Like, cause it, cause I mean the, the worry there is that if I don't sell it now, it's, it's going it's yeah, I'm not going to get any money from it versus, and but I, if the, if the, but you know what, but that's what's the crazy thing is if say that the, the, the benchmarks come out between a GTX 1080 and a, RTX 2080 and there's 15% difference in VR or 15% difference in 4k gaming or, you know what I mean? Not like yeah. not a, or 10% difference. Yeah. And, and the 2080 is 800 bucks with all the incentive, all the like act add ons and guys are selling them for a thousand. Cause there's no, you can't get any and retailers are going insane. So the next six months is there's none to buy. And if you get one, it's a thousand bucks instead of 700 bucks or whatever. But I can buy a 1080 for $400 or 350, mm-hmm. like you're seeing on eBay now. And mm-hmm. the thing is, somebody used it for six months and then they dumped it. That's a no-brainer in my book. If 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 and especially for us for VR, if the 2080 is a 25% increase or a 40% increase, yeah. if if it jumps and all I'm going to get is instead of super sampling at 1.8 or 2.0, I get a 2.5 super sampling, and it's twice the price. I, I personally, I'm going to be like, no way. Yeah. I'll be looking. I'll be looking, you know, for something for maybe a second computer. And honestly, uh, you're being very generous. Like I, I, I still, I until I see it, like I would be shocked if we. I mean, maybe over a a, a, a 1080, like with a 2080 Ti, you'll see something like a 40 or 50 percent increase. But like, yeah, they're they're predicting 20 percent. That's what I. Yeah. I mean, just max, based on. Max. Yeah. So they're predicting 20 percent max. Um, this double stuff, I mean, uh, you, you always, everybody always wants double. Like, oh, I want twice. The, if you're getting 100 frames, I want 200 frames. If you're getting, you know, 30 and 4K, I want 60 and 4K or higher. So I don't know if they're going to get that. I think they would have talked about it. I, I, I yeah. know there's a lot of different ideas of, you know, strategy and, 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 and being secretive. And we got this new thing we want to really push and we'll let the benchmark speak for themselves. And we're going to be very secretive and, and do the whole magic leap. Let's be secretive thing. So that when the cards finally hit, cause everybody's under a real lock and key as far as not being able to say anything that maybe that's the idea. Like we've always done this thing where we, you know, we're real upfront with this is the deal, but now we want the new story to be, RTX and ray tracing for a long time for months yeah. Yeah. and that's the whole story and then the story will be the benchmarks because otherwise that's from a marketing guy and, and I got a you know an education in marketing um, a little one but I can see that as being listen that's where the narrative is always let's talk about you know the benchmarks and then the cards come out and yeah. then but if you want to control the narrative and you want people to talk about something and you don't give them anything else but rumors, when it finally does come out and the benchmarks are impressive, like, you know, it's twice as more powerful. It's yeah. more than a 50% jump between the two generations. VR is insanely faster. You know, all good news. And then you're saying to yourself, well, yeah, it's kind of worth it. It's worth six, 700 bucks sure. in this very expensive hobby. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, yeah, like I, I don't know. I, I'm, I I'm optimistic, but at the same time, I doubt that it's going to be. But I actually think, I mean, do you, I again, like I, I could be completely wrong. And when the cards come out, the performance is super impressive in traditional games and in you know ray tracing game. I mean, I do think ray tracing is going to be the future. I'm not sure if it's going to be the future as Nvidia is stating it's going to like as far as like. Will it be proprietary to to RT cores and s- Tensor cores? No, because you know AMD and even Intel is going to be releasing. You know they're going to be releasing graphics cards. You know in twenty twenty one or something like that. So like there are going to be other players into the to the graphics yeah. game, and I think. But I think Nvidia smartly is 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 get jumping the gun as far as implementing that stuff now and getting good at it because if you look at their implementation, like 
NVIDIA was so ahead as far as their architecture's efficiency went in with like the with DirectX 11. Like DirectX 11 performance on NVIDIA cards is just leaps and bounds better than AMD's to the point where they once they had that like that 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 advantage like from basically like you know 6 or 7 series onwards they've just been coasting and yeah. Nvidia like can't really keep up and it seems like to me maybe that's what they're doing with this gen because they're they obviously released the so so right now we know AMD just released the Vega cards and they could barely you know compete with the 10 series cards, let alone, yeah. they really couldn't even compete with the 1080 Ti or the, the Titan XP. They yeah. could only compete with like 1080 and below. And at that, they weren't even, you know, they came like, like a good couple years later or yeah, a good year later. And yeah. then their performance wasn't even really matching it. So, and they're more expensive. So like, so anyway, so AMD just released their cards and it's known that they're not releasing anything new as far as like the high end goes until, until they're basically like a year or even a year and a half from now when they're releasing seven nanometer pro, uh, uh, GPUs. Yeah. And so this was like the perfect time for them to release something as a stopgap. And, 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 and rather than just doing more of the same, it seems like they're taking advantage of this situation where they're already ahead yeah, to, why? to release something that... Total- Total yeah. business move. Total so, business move. So like, they re- they're releasing something now when they know nothing's coming from the competitor that is already, you know, it's marginally better than what's already out. And there's no competition anyway, so who cares? Like, if you want the best, you have to get the 20 series. Even if it's only, you know, even if it only ends up being, let's say, like, prom- like let's say we're generous, 20 to 30% better performance than what was available two years ago at the same price or half as much, Right. If still, if you want the best, you're gonna get the best. It doesn't matter what the price is. Yeah. If you, and then, and then on top of that, now they're they're getting a chance to work with developers and implement technology for ray tracing. And this is all early stuff. So like all the demos that they've showed off in ray tracing look look incredible. I mean, they look really great. But they're all running at 1080p at like between 30 and six, like le- lower than 60 frames per second at this point. Huh. With yeah. targets, like most of the targets are to get it up to 1080p 60. That's that. That's the target. Like, yeah. We're hoping that when this is all ironed out, Battlefield Five, when switching on ray tracing with a 2080 Ti, we're hoping you know we're gonna get around 60. And same thing with Shadow of the Tomb Raider and like all these like that's kind of the so forget like high frame rates, forget high resolutions with ray tracing right now. We're just trying to get it to work at all. You know, and so that's so like for this. So if if you want to be that that small percentage of people that you know have the latest and greatest, you can do that, and you can spend the the really high you know prices to get that now, and you'll still have the best. You'll most likely have the fastest card when it comes to normal games and VR and everything. You'll have this side benefit of being able to try ray tracing for the first time for like a few months. And then most likely what's going to happen is AMD will release their 7 nanometer products in a year or so. And then and then Nvidia will then have the option to to see how that's received and then they'll be ready to release the same tech on 7 nanometer at, you know, and 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 really like blow them yeah. out of the water with it. And yeah, so they yeah. can, they can like the, with the die shrink, like right now, this is a huge, huge chip with a die shrink. They'll be able to put tons more, you know, they'll, be, you'll be able to get much higher, uh, clocks and you'll be able to put tons more SMs on yeah. the chip and you'll be much, able to much more efficient. Yeah. Man, so get, get, get more done, get more done with less. Yeah. And so, and so basically you'll have, you'll have, uh, part two of, of RTX come in about a year from now and, and it'll be cheaper to manufacture because all because it'll be a smaller chip. So even though it's on seven nanometers, the chip will be cheaper to make. And so then, like, because because if you think about it, these chips, these twenty series chips, are huge. So yeah. I, I know I know the they don't have to be as expensive as they are, but at the same time, they are more expensive to make than like past GPUs have been, just because they're so big. Like the yeah. the dies are ginormous. 
So yeah. like, so they'll be able to sell them for cheaper in, in a year from now, and developers will have their time to cut their teeth on on implementing this stuff. Because that was the other thing I was kind of interested in. I haven't heard a ton of developers and like what their thoughts were on implement, how easy it's going to be to implement the RTX stuff. I know Jensen kept saying, it just works, it just works. But like, to me, just from like listening to how he explained it and kind of having a basic understanding of how the ray tracing stuff like seems to work from an outsider, it yeah. seems like the engines where ray tracing will be easy to implement are engines that are already very like physical based, like very realistic in terms of like how they deal with lighting and, and materials and all that stuff already. Like yeah. if, if you have an engine that primarily fakes fakes everything and doesn't really have materials and you know bakes in all the lights and all of that stuff you can't just add in like realistic rate like nothing the 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 world in your game doesn't operate like the real world does but like in a game like i mean in a in a in an engine like frostbite like for battlefield 5 or like you know some of these other engines that are out there that are already doing their best to be kind of a realistic renderer as far as like physical based systems go. Um, it seems like you would be able to implement RTX and ray tracing in those types of games a lot easier because because it's like it's already set up for like you shoot a bunch of rays into this world and it all reacts like it should because you're kind of building it like like a yeah, real place kind of from the gr- from the ground up. Yeah, I, I, the thought of of ray tracing in VR. I, to me, performance to me, it is like what matters in VR. Yeah, it, it, it seems like yeah, it seems like to me, will that have come an effect? An effect? Will the can the RTX core in like five so, years? <laughs> yeah, the the, 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 the all the the processing power and energy that you put into doing ray tracing, um, is there some function it can do in a non ray trace game that yeah. is is applicable to VR? Um, to speed um, things up, to, and I, I know they did hint at it a little bit, but it's it's interesting. It's it's yeah. it's it's definitely them posturing. They've been posturing against AMD for a long time, so yeah. it's interesting to see. I, I'm 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 sh- I'll be shocked if the if the if the if the the benchmarks come in like we're saying 20 percent kind of numbers, and then everybody kind of go, oh my gosh, I just sold my six, I sold my seven hundred dollar. Uh, 1080 or I saw my $900 uh, 1080 Ti and now I have to, you know, for three, $400 and now I have to come up with another four or $500 or more to buy my 2080 or 2080 Ti. Um, so yeah, best of the best. I get it. But at the same yeah. time, I, I think a lot of people are, are going to be even, even us as VR folks that are looking at, you know, five, $600, $700 is like, okay, I, I invested. But again, because of because of all those VR games that we can't run at pretty much perfect ninety frames a second, I mean, there's not many. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but and the ones that are that we can't run perfectly, it's it's how they're written. They're not optimized very well. I don't. It, it, yeah. it, if you threw, you know, anything at it, it wouldn't. You know, Fallout Four, for perfect example. If you try to super sample Fallout Four and run it with all the bells and whistles, like there will be times when the game was going to just crawl, and it's just because it's not optimized. Yeah. So throwing a 2080 Ti at it probably won't do any better, but yeah, we'll see. It's interesting. So no, it's I, it's really and the, no and like and I'm with you. Like I'm one of those people that like like if you look at, <laughs> I've upgraded like my hardware a lot. Like I've I went from, uh, I mean not going too far back, but like let's just say like more modern ish type graphics cards. I went from like a 680 to two 970s to two 980 Ti's to like a 1080 Ti, like that's just like the past two or three. And like all of those times, like I'm a little crazy, but like I do want the best, but it has, there has, at the end of the day, the effort I go through to sell my cards and the money that you put to pay the difference, you have to feel like you're actually getting something of value for all that effort and money. Yeah. Something that, something that wasn't, working before or was stuttering or wasn't enjoyable yeah. now it's butter smooth and, and i mean and i mean better. you could argue that like upgrading from a 1080 ti to a 2080 ti will get you those few extra frames at 4k 60 to just make it that much smooth but like 
But like for me, I would much rather like right now I can run at 4K 60, for example, with my 1080 Ti as long as I turn off anti-aliasing, which at 4K, you don't really need that much. Like, like, like there's little tweaks you can do right now to get the perfect 4K 60 experience more or less in most titles with yeah, a 1080 yeah. Ti. And so like, and a, te- and a 2080 Ti is not going to, you know, like I, I don't need to spend double the money so that I can turn on anti-aliasing. I will say I will say one. I agree, hundred percent. I will say one last thing. If the twenty eighty T, uh, Ti comes out and it's been out for a little while and it cal- everything calms down, the miners are not destroying them and buying them all. The 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 enthusiast crowd has gotten their the one the the top end guys have gotten theirs and it kind of chills out a little bit. Maybe there's a couple sales. And then this could be six months to a year from now. Yeah. And then we are in a situation where we have. The Vibe Pro, we have a Pimax at some point will come out of very high resolution. And hopefully, I'm, I'm really hoping that it comes out and it, all the issues, any issues are fixed or they're, they're minor, nothing. And it's a it's a wonderful headset and everybody's happy and, and wonderful. And, and maybe the other two headsets, they come out with a variant, like what is it, Star VR. And there's yeah. one other one that's like real high, it has foveated rendering and, and high res. And those are, I know, going to the arcade market, but maybe they have like a an S version or a light version. And say we have a, 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 a better selection of higher resolution uh, headsets in a year or a year and a half, Okay, 2080 Ti is now maybe 700 bucks or 600 bucks, and they do performance benchmarks on it, and you can do, you know, much yeah. better. Not you know, liquid smooth 90, and it all of all of the uh, the the internals of it and the design of it, uh, it makes it possible to run at those high resolutions. I think at that point, I'm telling myself. Yeah, I want one. I, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, but that's, that's assuming require. that again, that's, though you're that's, that's assuming, assuming a, lot. a lot of stuff to happen. Yeah. A, a lot the, the headsets to come out that are higher resolution, and this car, this card to be the answer to. I want to run at a higher resolution and even super sample at 90 frames perfectly with yeah. everything turned on. No, I mean if if you yeah. had to, I mean if you can get it at a similar price to a 1080 Ti, of course I would get a 20 a 2080 Ti over a 1080 Ti, but like. I think the problem is when you can get something that's twenty five percent, you know, worse for half the price. Like even the ten eighty to ten eighty Ti price difference. Like the like there, the twenty eighty Ti was a good thirty percent faster than a twenty eighty, but it was you know only a hundred fifty two hundred ish dollars more expensive. So then it kind of it, then it made sense. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But like, but here we're talking about let's say the thirty percent. But it's, I mean, right now it's like double the price. And at some point, like, yeah, I mean, if it gets so close to where the competitors to the twenty eighty Ti are thirty percent worse off, but like, you know, still like, you know, two hundred. And it also depends on what the price point is. Like, if if the twenty eighty Ti went down to like eight hundred dollars, let's say. Or yeah. eight, or even nine hundred ish dollars. Let's say just sub a thousand dollars. I could yeah. see it making sense if its closest competitor is twenty five, thirty percent, you know, slower, and yeah. also like three hundred dollars cheaper. You know, yeah. like like if if you're if you're already spending seven hundred dollars, you might as well spend a thousand dollars for the best. You I know? think like that's. I, I, yeah, I, I totally, totally. And here's the thing. Here's the silver lining. High-end cards, so I say a 1070 or higher, 1070, 1080, 1080 Ti, those cards are now being sold in the aftermarket, eBay, whatever, offer up all the different ways you can buy used hardware, are yeah. now making their way into people that before were like, I'll never spend $1,000 or $800 on a card. But yeah. $400, I'd spend $400. Yeah. Now they now have VR-ready, very capable machines. Yeah, and that's pretty cool. So that's good for VR. Because all and there's a huge library of games out there that you'll destroy with a 1070 or a 1080 yeah. or whatever. Yeah, and no, and, and you know, it's like, good news. It's yeah, good news. no, I think right now looking at the, I mean, if you're kind of a higher end user, it seemed like, I mean, and again, I actually think I'm of the opinion that really to be the safest. I'm not saying in the long run it would be the best because you might get lucky and get a card for really cheap now, and then in a, like a month from now we know the the 
we know the actual performance of the 20 cards and maybe they're not so great and 10 the 10 series cards shoot up in price who knows so maybe yeah. right now if you're lucky you get a steal of a deal and you really make out with the best you know in the best situation but like yeah 10, i kind of think 70 for 220 bucks i mean yeah. that's no i mean insane. that's dirt. a yeah. used 1070 that somebody used for six months yeah, yeah. that's 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 incredible the, the, the same thing card that in January or February was like, what, what were they running for when the miners were eating them up? You could, yeah. 10 seventies were going on eBay for It's still crazy though bucks. to me. You know, what's so crazy is that like in general prices are all up. Prices have not gone down as much as like I would have expected. Like, so a 10 70, it's interesting you say that because when I think of value, yeah, that sounds like a great value to me. Right. But when I actually compare it to how long that performance has been available, it's not that great of a value. Like, so here's a, so it was a, it was, a, it was yeah. Yeah. When you look at the so, price and then the, yeah, the, the so, lot, how long it's been out. Yeah. Yeah. So, so right now, like, like if someone said, should I get a 1070, I can get it for like 200, like around 200, 250 bucks. I'd say, yeah, that's not a bad deal. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'd probably actually say, I'd probably actually say, look for like a, a 1070 TI because the 1070 TIs are closer to 1080s and you can get them for like for cheap. 300 ish like so maybe like that extra fit like the, for an extra we do it 50 all day. We'd be like for another for another 80 bucks you could get a 1080 like, <laughs> yeah you know, it's for it never ends. no i know but like but so but so anyways but so like but all those prices seem like kind of reasonable the thing that's crazy is that a 1070 was only marginally faster than a 980 ti yeah and a 980 and i sold my 980 ti's granted for pretty cheap this is before the mining boom um but I just needed to get rid of. I had two. I wanted to get rid of them to to pay for most of my 1080 Ti. So I sold. I sold two 980 Ti's for like around 275 dollars each. Yeah. So so I a, sold a year ago. I think it was a year ago. That was like, oh, yeah, a year and a half ago. Give, give t- oh wow, so a ways. Yeah, because because the when did the 980 Ti come out? The nine. Or I mean the 1080 Ti. 1080 Ti. Launched. Christmas time or something. It came out uh, March 2017. March 2017, because I got my 1080 at November or yeah. October. So November 2016. So I mean, well over a year, like more like a year and a half ish. Yeah. Um, a year and a half ish ago, you could get the same power for roughly the same price as now. <sighs> Everything's expensive. The rent is too damn high. Is but <laughs> <laughs> what what we say at work all the time. Yeah. The rent is too damn high. It's, just crazy. it's expensive. It's crazy. It's it's the on the plus side though. Like if you're buying these things and you want to sell, like 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 it seems like they're holding their value. Thank goodness there is a secondary market because I mean for a long time, three four years when when PCs were in their stride and a two thousand dollar PC in five years was worth a hundred bucks. It yeah. felt like. It was a piece of junk. In four or five years, you'd be like, "No, that's it's, it was total junk in the late '90s or early 2000s," and now like it holds on. Like I bought a I bought a motherboard from 2014 today for a hundred bucks that probably sold for 250 bucks, like an enthusiast board. Yeah. Just for a secondary computer, and it's it held its value pretty dang well from 2014 to now, four years. So stuff is holding its value. The secondary yeah. market is very good. That's great news. I, I, I'm excited from that. But I, uh, I, 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 my advice to everybody listening is if you, if you are playing mainly VR games and your system is fine, you're, yeah. you're hitting 90 frames a second and you're, you're loving life and you have a 1070, 1070 Ti, 1080, 1080 Ti, um, I would say sit still and let it all kind of unfold. Because why yep. gamble? Why yep. why gamble with this amount of money? No, the I rent agree. is too damn high. So. And I and I think I think that this is going to be a short. I mean, I could be wrong. Like I said, things can change. But I just have a feeling that the twenty series is going to be short. Yeah. And that we're going to see the next cards from Nvidia sooner rather than later. Like it's not going to be like this Pascal. Like, and and so yeah, if if you can hold out. It's usually good to wait a generation because you see big jumps move if you skip. And if you yeah. don't, and, and like you said, I, I think in VR titles, all that really matters is that the resolution you're running in the headset 
can you hit 90 frames per second? And can you it, hit 90? It is it pretty? Yeah, and it, and and that's all that matters. And yeah. and and these in the 10 series cards, a 1070 or especially a 1080 has no problem running games currently. I um, tell the listeners, if you got money burning a hole in your pocket and you're fine with your PC specs, you're fine with your computer, start looking at your uh, it, it accessories. Start looking at things you can get to make the experience better. Joysticks, Hotas, gun stocks, um, deluxe audio strap for the Vive. Or even uh, start saving for, like, I'm sure, like, I mean, the Vive Pro's out. Um, yeah, yeah. Like start you, putting money away, yeah. Put, put, put money away for... Ahead. For the next, the next to, version to of the Vive or the or the or like, yeah, yeah. I'm saying even if you want to spend your money on your computer and VR and all of that, like there's a lot that's going to be on the horizon past yeah. these current cards that yeah. is going to be really interesting stuff. I think so. So yeah. Or buy or buy some games and support some devs who make VR games. That's another good thing to do. Yeah, if you know if you want. If you got if you're if you're Mr. Moneybags and you got a lot of money. <laughs> Uh, or you can be like me and finally like yeah i'm i i mean i could spend money on a 20 series card but like i am in drastic need of a change on my computer and finally after i built i like the base of this computer i built it near the end like probably mid 2012 maybe before then and that i'm still running a, a 3770k with you know ddr3 ram and an Azrock motherboard that served me well okay. and it's finally time i think to i think it's, cons- time. I think it's yeah time. so i'm 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 thinking about biting the bullet and getting one of these i9 nine 900k processors so we'll see they're gonna they're gonna run out of nines eventually eventually it'll just be like it'll be, like 12, <laughs> it'll be 12 nines and then like, uh, a, and like a letter you know, there's yeah. never. It's annoying though because, like, I think this is going to be a good. I mean, it's basically the eight core version of, of the 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 Coffee Lake processor. So it's, yeah. you know, the eighty seven hundred Ks that were out, which were awesome. It's yeah. like the eight core version of that. But it's like you know the Coffee Lake that like Coffee Lake was a big jump, as far as like processors went. Like yeah. this is like a marginal. I mean, it's going to be. I think we'll. You'll get the extra two cores, but it's pretty much Coffee Lake, and you'll probably get better clocks because they're supposedly like rumor has it going to be soldering the i the IHS the the heat spreader rather than yeah. using thermal paste. So like so that's all good, yeah. um, but really, if I wanted to be honest with you, I think in a year a year or so after that, like Intel is supposedly going to be releasing their chips on this new on their new ten nanometer process, which is like essentially like supposedly with finfets or whatever like their intel's 10 nanometer process is very similar performance wise to like everyone else's seven nanometer process yeah and, and supposedly that's going to be a big jump so like if i really so wanted what, to, but you can't no, wait forever you have to yeah no no you, you oh it's it's fear of missing out kind of thing and uh, mixed with you it's always six months it's always going to be something better so you just eventually if if you're if it's driving you crazy you, you, yeah. you have to do something. This is this is a hobby we decide to spend our money on, and and, and it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it, that's my always been. If you if you buy a bunch of games and you forget about them and it's way past the return uh, limit on Steam and you know you're going to keep them and you buy them and they're all right, they're not great. Well, guess what? You supported a dev. You just yep. supported somebody. You supported the hobby. It's okay. It, you, they're not all going to be uh, amazing. Um, and and that's and in hardware, same thing. You're. Yeah, you take it low on the nose a little bit. Maybe you buy something new, and you're going to sell it to somebody else. But that's probably some kid in his 20s that got out of college, doesn't have a lot of money. If you're listening now and you're just barely into VR and you don't have a lot of extra cash, maybe you're in your 20s, you've got a ton of student debt, whatever, and you're listening and you're in just barely into VR, your minimum spec, that would be my – if you got some spare money to lay, laying around. And I remember when I was in 20s and I didn't have kids, I had some spare money. That would be my advice. Nab a 1070, 1070 Ti. Yeah. Get your computer in a decent shape so that you can enjoy the games and not and kind of forget about the whole performance side of it. That's that's the next level when you don't really give a shit about is this going to run. You can kind of be in that thing of going, well, most of everything is going to be okay. Now I can just play the games. I don't have to worry about all the other stuff. Yeah. That's a big deal. So uh, to close up my thoughts on on this whole yeah. thing is I, I would I my advice would be to wait. And just kind of wait it out 
uh, unless you're rich and then you probably already pre-ordered it right now. Yep. So, yep. No, uh, I, dude, I can't. <laughs> yeah. I, I totally, totally, totally agree with you. And yeah. man, like it, you know, computer hardware is in a good place where like, like you were saying, if you, if you can scrounge up some bait, like a CPU and a motherboard and some Ram from like two, like even older than two, but like 2014 era stuff, if you can find yeah. someone selling it on Craigslist and then yep. you pick up like a 1070, dude, you're, Boom. you have you're a in, solid, that's a computer you're that in. can play games better than any console. Like you can play VR, you can do all kinds of stuff. That's like, and you can, you'd be shocked at how cheap if you, if you really do your diligence and just yeah. be careful out there. Like, you know, try to avoid cards that have been like heavily mined on. If you can find out from people, yeah. that kind of stuff. But like, man, like, yeah, you can, I mean, I would say to chat them up and see if they're really, how long they've been in it. This is yeah. the other thing. How long they've been into PCs, how long they've been into, if they're into gaming particularly, how long they've been doing it, their, their, their knowledge level. If they don't know a whole lot, but they have a whole lot, that just means they flip stuff. So I go more for people that are enthusiasts that are into it, that like the hobby itself. Yeah. So I tend to try to connect with those kinds of people. Um, and it's and 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 stay with that but yeah avoid the mining stuff avoid flakes out there i mean standard rules of buying stuff on offer up and craigslist supply um but it's funny the motherboard i got now it's one of it was a asus saber tooth uh yeah i remember those yeah yeah five-year warranty um so there's still some of that on there uh who knows how i'll get the ownership transfer and be able to say that i bought it but sure whatever 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 but yeah built like a tank you know that kind of yeah. thing so there's there's stuff out there yeah like you said 2014 to now i5 Dude. or higher 970 or higher if you're in that range yeah uh, uh come on in the water's fine at 350 <laughs> rift 500 by and and Again, I don't want to start, you know, the difference between the two, uh, but that's it's it's pretty much you get you get one if you get the Rift, uh, you, you need a little bit more of other stuff. In my opinion, maybe you need a third camera. You're you're gonna want uh, there's a little bit of stuff here and there you might want with the Vive. Yeah, you're gonna want the Deluxe Audio Strap. Uh, that's that's pretty much a given. But you don't have to just get in. So if you're on the fence, I think now is the time to. Get, I'm a, I know I'm biased, but I, I think it's the time to get in. Just I to agree. wrap. To wrap up my thoughts on that whole concept. Yeah, no, you said it well. I think we're done. So, but that okay. that was a really interesting topic. So, all right, next, next. Um, all right, so yeah, let's 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 quickly move. It. Initially, we were going to do short news period, followed by uh, some <laughs> game talk, just on some projects that we were like. No, I, usually our game talks consist of us like going kind of in depth in like one or two games that we've played. Um, but this week we wanted to talk about like Damon's actually been kind of, kind of heading a couple of of projects that we were we were hoping to do sometime on the show. Um, you know, maybe this is a good time just to talk about like so initially we were going to do an arcade VR uh, discussion and we can still do that. But yeah. I I will I will on air during the podcast uh, pose this question to Damon because this episode's already been kind of long. Do you think we should table that to a next episode and we can just talk about your your experience slash uh, you know yeah your experience trying to do the use the two the the too fast or what uh, two two HMD too furious there you go that's what I'm calling it that's what I'm calling it too uh, too fail basically I almost, no, um, <laughs> I almost no, think I, we I, just I, talk about that and we and we can do okay, the arcade I, I one agree. later so a little hint. In the future episode, we're going to talk about. Our, I'm a big arcader. I'm a big arcade fan. I I'm big into retro gaming. I raise my kids on retro gaming. I have a couple of classic arcade games that have computers in them, so they play thousands of games. So I am big, and I'm I'm 40, so I was raised in the 80s in an arcade. So anything arcade related or retro is my milieu. I like oh, it. Yeah. I'm into it. So when I got into VR, I kind of said, well what is some stuff that's either inspired by arcade or whatever, but that will be that whole idea. So if you're into that idea or you think that's cool, listen to a future episode here soon. And I'll break down my list of all the VR games. If you love that to go, but, uh, another project I had going, you just mentioned was I have two headsets and I have a decent computer. I have a 1080 and I have a, a, a nice I seven current I seven, uh, processor. And it's, it's good. It's good. Um, 
and I have a daughter who's eight, who just turned eight today. Um, Congratulations. Happy birthday. She, she's in New York with mom. So they're, they're <laughs> living it up. Uh, and, uh, that was their birthday present. We're no more oh. birthdays. I, I got to tell you, you got you got little ones, but birthdays it used to be uh, you know, spend twenty bucks, you go to Chuck E. Cheese, that was your birthday. <laughs> uh, you'd have your friends over and they'd eat a cake, and that was it. That was your birthday. Now birthdays are four or five thousand dollar affairs. Uh. I don't know if that's how it is in South Florida, and maybe it is the rest of everywhere. But kids' birthday parties have gotten ridiculous. Yeah, here no, here so, in Chicago they can get pretty bad too. Yeah, so, it's ridiculous. And, and I mean, I'm dealing with I'm my, like I'm dealing with a three year old. So I'm yeah. sure the prices just go gets, up as they get it gets older. More and more and more exponentially, exponentially. Ugh. So last year, after last year's birthday, we had a video game truck and we had you know people over and I had dozens and 40, 50 people tried VR that night, um, and it was just a, a great affair. But That's it was awesome. it, hundreds of dollars, like five, six hundred dollars to get the truck, to get the laser tag, to do the stuff. Pres, oh, it was it was awful. So I said, I'm not ever doing this again. From now on, <laughs> from now on, you pick a city. Your aunts will come, grandma will come, they'll do that. So that's what they're doing. So um, little tip, uh, figure out a way to have cheap birthday parties. You'll save yourself <laughs> tons of money. It's, so I said I want to think of some ways to play. So now that I have two headsets. Yeah, and, 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 just, and to be clear, computer. you have a Vive and you have a Rift, right? I have a, one Vive and I have one Rift. And one and computer. And one computer. So I said – I saw a mention a long a while ago, months and months ago, of a guy that was playing Rec Room with a Vive and a Rift at the same time, two people. So two headsets, two HMDs plugged in, one running on Oculus and its runtime, and then one running Steam VR with the Vive. And it worked. And he would show the video and it and and it worked. The caveats are you really kind of need to turn everything down to super sampling 1.0. You go into Rec Room and turn you crank everything down to basic. And I think you could get away with less, you know, if you had a 1070 and a decent CPU, you could probably do the same thing because Rec Room will run on anything. So mm -hmm. it works. There is some issues that I've encountered with audio and with, and, you know, computers and trying so, to have two separate streams of recording. Real quick. Like, so, yeah. so like if I wanted to do this, so I have a Rift and I have a Vive and I have one computer. Yeah. If I want to go and set that up, I, I basically just plug, like, is there, first of all, plugging them in at the same time. And then there's a method. Okay. Definitely a method. And this is works solely for Rec Room, this method. Okay. The method is, one, you, down, of course, download Rec Room on Steam VR, and then also go into Oculus Home and download Rec Room. I would put them, if you have multiple drives, on separate drives. So if yeah. you, it doesn't matter if one's SSD, one's not. Yeah. Um, if you put one on one drive on whatever your default location is, and then choose multiple libraries if you have to, whatever, Google how to do that. And then on Steam VR, put it on a different place. That's just I've been doing that with all the games that I've been trying out to do two headsets on one computer. But yeah, for Rec Room, you want to start up uh, Rec Room in your Rift and get it going and get into the menu. Basically, get into the when you, you they let you in Rec Room, they you in your dorm room basically. So get to that point. And for me, my daughter gets into that point, and then she fiddles around and, and plays around in, in the dorm room while I then go start up Steam VR, plug my HMD uh, Vive into the computer, start up Steam VR, get in, and then from there I'm using the menu to go and start Rec Room. Now, Rec Room is unique in that you have to really have an account. So I open mm -hmm. two accounts. One is my main account, and then one is a youth account which is like if you're under 12 or 8 or something sure and that this i think is within rec room right within yeah. rec room yeah so my since i have a daughter who's eight and i don't really want her talking to anyone else um i put her in and she's flagged as a youth so if there's anybody that you know they create a room and we don't really do anything multiplayer it's yeah, yeah. really it's really us playing jumbotron or paintball or uh frisbee golf just me and her Okay. Uh, so that's that's about all we're doing. But it's fun. It's great, and it runs really well. So yeah, you get them both running. You need to have two accounts set up. Um, if it's two adults, you know you can set up two adult accounts and then sign in, and then from there it works pretty well. There is some caveats with the sound and the way computers, the way Windows PCs work with recording audio and recording devices. They they don't like to do it 
two at the same time. There is a little bit of a hack, I think, out there to where you can have two recording devices work exactly at the same time, mm. two audio recording devices, mm -hmm. uh, like duplex recording. Mm -hmm. But it is a little weird, and it, I don't know if it's a Steam VR thing or a Rift in Steam VR thing and an Oculus that uh, runtime thing, but they it doesn't like to work. It's very very weird to get working, and the thing is, is if you want to talk to the person that's in the room, you don't really need your microphone. You can just say something, and they'll be able to hear you. Yeah. Uh, the, I, my experience was is like my I could hear my daughter through her microphone in my, but I did uh, do some stuff where like you can go into Windows 10 and you say I want to listen to this device. I did a little bit of that, but then the problem is you hear them real time when they're in their headset. If you say, I want to listen to the microphone. Of yeah. The it's delayed. Rift on my, yeah. You hear them real time on that, but then in the game you hear them delayed. So it's a little bit weird that you, you got to futz with it, but it's worth it. I think. I if mean, you have, did, just curious, like as far as, so like you, you mostly talked about like using the mics and stuff yeah. for playback. I mean, is it fine just to like, I guess since you're in the same room, you can just set playback to one device. Like, just have one of the game instances be playing audio wise and just have it loud enough where everybody can hear like on an external speaker or. Oh yeah. Like, like, like just mirror one to your TV and turn it yeah, up. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. That's definitely an option. Um, I, it's definitely an option. It becomes then the harder parts was that there's directional sound. Yeah. And how does that become? Yeah. Then, then, then it, if you try to mirror that to a TV, then it's not directional anymore. So it's a lot of fiddling, and you kind of have to find a middle ground. So, were um, you able to, like, as far as just, like, let's say you don't want to use the mics. Let's say, let's say I, I'm like I'm playing Rec Room with someone locally on the same PC, and I decided I'm just going to talk out loud in the room. Normally, yeah. Um, but for like the the audio playback, um, is there a way to have like? So, did you have separate directional, uh, like audio playback for each user or no? Yeah, no, the sounds in the game, my what I hear yeah. of what's going on is fine. Okay. It's it's just what is being recorded for me and okay. is it making it out and that kind of thing. That's the hard part okay. to sync up. And maybe there's somebody out there, maybe a listener who's actually perfected it. Maybe there's yeah. a trick. Or, I mean, if or, you if, or if or someone some has of, and they want to send us, shoot us an email to yeah, contact gotta, at everythingvive.com or, yeah. um, or, or post it somewhere, yeah, that'd be great. So that got me thinking, oh, you know what? As long as I can find a game that's on Steam, that the same game is also on the store for Oculus, I can do the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. And as long as I can either A, ramp down the graphic settings to as low as possible and give them really low, or uh, it's a game like Rec Room that just naturally is low, you know, that not, is not a demanding game, will it work? Mm. So I began a adventure of how many games, <laughs> how many games have co-op or multiplayer that would work. Yeah. And the list I, the the preliminary list was Onward because I'm a big Onward fan, mm -hmm. and I, I it was on sale. It was like there was one time it was like it was stupid cheap on the Oculus Store. So I said, okay, I'll just buy it. I just bought it, and it I it is okay it, it is okay but again there's the audio problem and it's very slow so you're really, when you really say there's an problem. audio audio again, problem same kind of the same kind of audio same problem. thing the, okay but the game for the, the problem with onward is and between rec room and onward if rec room if your voice chat's not working or it's it's weird it, you, you're not missing a whole lot you're still going to be able to play frisbee golf just fine or and you're you know, only and you're only playing with each other, whereas onward, or, even if you have two people here, you're playing with other people. Yeah, it's incremental to be able to have voice communication with the person that you're with. It's a huge part of the game. So that was that was tough on that. And then I've I've done a couple of other. And you said game. performance was slow, like it it was laggy. Yeah, or? it's a little more. Yeah, it's 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 uh, it's it's not as. Uh, it's op the game itself has gotten a lot more optimized since it came out, yeah. but it is optimized for one PC. Oh, it's gonna, it's gonna it's gonna stress one. But turning everything down, uh, I think I did get it going at one point. But I really only would have the person. I would. It's really for me to be in the shooting range with someone who's brand new and be able to point at things like, oh, this is where you, this is where you, uh, you know. 
pulled out the clip. This is where you chamber the next round. This, if you look over here, like being able to talk to someone, it's so much easier when you're with them, as you can imagine. Yeah, so yeah. that's the kind of stuff that was that. Now, I tried some other games that uh, just didn't want to work at all. And the one that was the most frustrating because it's one of my daughter's favorite games is Electronauts. Mm. And that was the thing that made me kind of just kind of determine that, you know, after hours of trying, you know, riff first, then, you know, nothing plugged in, then trying the vibe first with the, the riff unplugged and vice versa, trying to shut down processes, trying to kill things. Then they do a, then they recently did an update and now it doesn't want to, not to Oc Electronauts, but to Oculus did an update and now it keeps kind of basically taking over the second, because you're running two instances. You're running one instance of a game on the Steam, but then and then one instance on Oculus, and all of a sudden it'll jump, which is the weird thing. This I've only seen this Electronauts. You'll be playing it on Rift, you'll start it up on Steam, and then all of a sudden the Rift will be on Steam. And then it hmm. puts basically on pause, and it really does put it on pause. It pauses your game on the Oculus until you close Steam VR, and then all of a sudden you're right back where you left off. Hmm. So that was frustrating, and I said, at that point I said, I, I, I give up. I failed. <laughs> so... So the moral of the story is Rec Room, if you have two headsets and you have a good computer, totally doable. If you had kids coming over and, the, and you wanted to let them play Frisbee golf or whatever and you set it up as two youth accounts or have a you know father, daughter, mother, daughter, mother, son, uh, and they want to have two people in at the same time, I think totally doable, totally playable, and not super hard. Hmm. Other games, uh, certainly a lot more difficult. So th what that got me to... Um, was I think I, I have enough, I thought, well, I have enough spare parts, maybe because the Rift, the minimum specs on it is a 960. And I, I'm trying to think what the. Is it a 960 or a 970? No, they, they changed it. Huh. About, I think a year after it came out, they said, oh, we've got new software and the, the minimum is now 960. Interesting. And I have a 960 uh, from you know, years ago that was in my prior computer before VR, that's just been sitting in storage. And I said, well, hmm, if I can take the 960 and I've got a pretty good, you know, other guts and I was able to get some stuff, mm -hmm. do I have enough? And I got, you know, a free computer from work that they were going to throw away that had an i5-4590 or something. And um, I harvested that and I got a little bit of stuff. So that's all coming Friday the case and the CPU cooler. I've got the motherboard. I've got the CPU. So I've got all the parts Friday, probably late at night or middle of the day. Well, that will be my project is to put that whole thing together. That'll be load it, Yeah. Yeah. Load it up, put everything on baseline, install the games, you know, that my daughter would want to play. And then her surprise when she gets home is we can now without me having to fiddle for hours and hours, just get in, put the headset on, and we, within two minutes, were playing any of a range of games, two-player, and no issues. It's just Yeah. Gonna, Dude, it's that'll gonna... be so much, you know, like, uh, that was one of the things, actually, when, when I was at E3 talking to different VR developers, um, yeah. and I saw some of it there, but, like, as far as thinking ahead of what they thought was going to be, like, you know, a future VR, like, feature or like what's up and coming with with vr and then in you know the coming months or years whatever a yeah. lot of people said uh local local multiplayer well and my i have two thoughts on it is one i know it's niche i know that but a, lo a lot of, i think there's a, a high there's a good percentage of people that are into vr that have both headsets so it it's i think it's advantageous to maybe on some games especially the rec room type lower yeah. lower lower demanding games to put something in there but certainly, you know, if you can get a hundred dollar just mixed reality set and I could put that on and then like be in a game and watch it and spectate it or do tutorials for people that come mm -hmm. over and, and be able to look at them and have hands and say, all right, look over here, That's point so cool. here, do that. That is a huge deal. Yeah. No. And, and, and thinking, I mean, like in a sense, like you're kind of jumping the gun by building another computer and, you know, we have the multiple HMDs, but like you can think of a situation in the future where like if standalones become popular, where people can bring their standalones exactly. like, to the exactly. same place. And yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, and, and everybody able... could kind of join in and watch or spectate or, or hop in and out and swap, you know, swap yeah. the standalone back. And, and, and like, uh, especially with a big party, like, I'm not expecting, like, 20 people to all have headsets, but, like, if you yeah. have, like, a, a few of your friends over and you have a couple of headsets or, or even three, like, exactly. I could see people taking turns and, like, doing yeah. some, like... I mean, that'd be a lot of fun. That sounds it's, super cool. It's, it's, it takes it up quite a bit. When, it's, when you know the person's right there and you're playing, it's so much different because you know them and you know they're there and you you can talk to them plus you talk to people in the game. It makes a big difference. I, I think it's cool. Now, anybody has had trepidation that has both and thinks that – or is thinking of getting – you know, we're all – you know, this is everything Vive. So a lot of people are thinking about getting a Vive or the large portion already do – and you're thinking about, you know, there's maybe I get a rift, 350 bucks. That sounds kind of cool. Don't worry so much. I've, I've seen a lot of people online, one, worry about having to get a third camera, which I don't have. Yeah. And I have a, I have a kind of 2.5 meter by two meter play space, little kids playroom. So I, for me, it's not a big deal, but I have the three, uh, the, the experimental, you know, 360 setup where the, they're in the diagonal corners mm. works pretty much perfectly. I, I don't have hardly, you know, 95% of the, the same range as my Vive does. And I have them almost exactly in the same spot. They don't interfere in any way. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, and I actually, get, so that's I, interesting. I, yeah. I never tried doing mine di- diagonal, but I it did get, perfect. yeah, I got a third sensor. Yeah. I'll tell you, like, I mean, the only, it did make a big difference for me, but that was because like, so I had my two rift sensors just on in front of me. And the only time they would ever fail is when I would completely turn around. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then the third sensor just sees you, from that other side. So like I could totally see, but like, like now that I kind of have a better idea of what each sensor sees, like going into the settings and like, I have a feeling you're right. Like that if you were to put the two sensors in corners that they're, they can see like their angle of, 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 of capturing the, the space in front of them is wide enough to where you would probably get like, like close to the full amount it works, of space. It works surprising. I was shocked. Yeah. At how as long as you're not like spacing them out too far away from each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I was shocked. I was totally expecting. I kind of went into it thinking, because eh. you hear a lot of stuff. You hear, especially in like Vive subreddit, you're going to hear a lot of people talk about. But it's it's pretty dang good. It's yeah. pretty dang good. I think it depends. I think it really depends on are you trying to get the exact same sized. Like, like, uh, let's be real. Like, in most situations, you're not it's less. probably it's less. having the full. Like, I'm saying, yeah. like, like w- even with the Vive, like, like I know the Vive Pro has so much more space, but like at home using the Vive, like you're yeah. probably unlikely to have a full, like, yeah. like use the entire play space that it's capable of. And likewise with the Rift, then, like, if you're already confined to a smaller spot space. Chances are the 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 rift. If you set up the the sensors appropriately, you'll probably be able to cover that smaller space. I I, I have to say I think it's about ninety percent. I, I get about ninety percent on my back wall. I can go all the way to the back wall with my Vive, and then in the rift, it gets a little wonky. Yeah. But it gets wonky eight inches or seven inches yeah. before I get to the back wall. So imagine if you just so imagine if it was exact. a little tiny smaller. Like what what if your play space was like a foot shorter? Like it'd probably cover the whole area. I'd be, I, uh, I don't no. know. I'd be, I'd be miserable if that was. My <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah. I want a bigger house. I want to make. I want to get a third or second job, just so I can buy a bigger house solely, <laughs> so I can have a big giant room or know somebody that has like a big warehouse or something, and they're like, yeah, yeah sure, anytime you want to come over. Uh, here's the key. <laughs> like, I, that's my dream. That's all I dream about now. That's so crazy. But, that's funny. um. So that was my that was my thought, and so I said, you know what, this is silly. Uh, they had some deal on, and and they had some deal on Amazon for a uh, cooler master like RGB. I'd never do the RGB stuff, but it's my daughter, so she's gonna think it's great. <laughs> RGB with like a with like a like a tempered glass side, and sure. you know it, it's you know saber tooth Asus with like red and black camouflage. She's gonna think it's amazing. Dude, and, you're 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 making me think like I already had plans on upgrading my CPU. Now I'm just thinking I should just like get an extra. Like rather than sell this stuff off, I should just get an extra GPU and like build a second system. Well, just make your current system your your spare. No, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah, that's yeah, a little yeah. probably. I like the idea of people come over. People come over and either a well, I've had it with my daughter. Like she has friends over and she has to sit on the bed and watch them the whole night, 
and it goes from her one friend to another friend, and she doesn't really, if she plays, you know, it's, I don't know. I mean, it's, I don't know how to describe it, but like you play all the time. I tell my daughter, you play all the time and these are your guests, but it's then it's not fair. Cause it's so, you know, via is so private and such a, you're, you're in your own universe. So it's, it's not like you're sharing anything with anyone yeah, else. No, this makes it much VR yeah. can, can be very social. Yeah, and yeah, I feel yeah. like this makes it much more social. This is solely I, I after the last couple of times when she had friends over, I was like, yeah, this kind of sucks. Like she has to sit there and watch while they have fun yeah. and can't really talk to them or say anything. And, and yeah. So now when she has friends come over, they're going to be able to play tons of games. And then to me, I, 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 I'm a little bit, you know, on there going, I want, I want us to be able to play and have fun and it not take, ever, <laughs> Dude, not take you know, ever to set up. That this just, is, is a big t- what you're describing is kind of making me think that there should be a portion. I don't know if this is this similar to the arcade VR episode that we're going to do soon, or if it's like a, another episode or something, but like games that would be fun for local co-op, like not just co-op, but just like in general, like, like you know, kind of head-to-head I, type games or games. I have where, the list. I already have the list. It's right. already been. It's already been curated. Sweet. Of, of stuff that I am personally saying. I think for local stuff, this with two computers, same area. Yeah. Two headsets, and and it doesn't have to be Vive Rift. If you got two computers, you can yeah. do two doesn't or whatever matter. you want. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, that's a future episode too, because future or, episode. So because that's that because man, like. I, you're actually like I was already I had my mind on upgrading now I just can't wait to see what wh- how much fun it's going to be to have two two systems that I can show off VR to people with your wife is going to call me now and yell at me I think yeah she's going to be like what did he do what has he done now because now I'm just going to have to spend even more money than I had planned just but, I I don't know it's- I'm going to go back to stripping, I think. I, <laughs> no, I, I have to wait to see what these new processors are actually going to be priced. And like, yeah, yeah. so rumor is they're coming out on like October 1st. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I'll tell you right now, I shouldn't be spending that. Ca- but at the same time, I kind of do this, you know, like quite a bit. And it's time for an upgrade. So yeah, yeah. let's do it. All right. But anyways, all right. Well, that's awesome. So, okay. So, so. So, two HMDs, two Furious was a failure, but two big, big fail. But it led to, I got enough spare parts. If you, I, I, that's, I have enough spare parts. So I, I added a little bit of stuff to it. I got on offer up and bought a motherboard. I from work they gave me a like throwing away. My company makes a lot of. They do quite well, and they after a couple of years they'll just if it's nobody wants it, and nobody wanted big computer. They yeah. want laptops they don't yeah. want big computers no. so he's like no this is gonna sit here for years and we're gonna throw the trash and they did the paperwork and you can have it and and, and literally all i used out of it uh, i tried but the only thing you really use because it's all proprietary is the processor and mm. the hard drive and Do they I've even have like can you even put a gpu in there those systems or no e, but the, the power supplies are proprietary that's the other thing if uh, you have a proprietary hp dell even a even if it looks like it's an atx case or a mid tower kind of thing it the power supplies they have their own special connectors on them the power connectors are different the mm. you know the the, the, the all, all the connectors are a lot different they don't have the standard pinouts uh and then the boards themselves are weird everything about it is weird then then you know if you want to put a card in you got to have at least a decent what four five six hundred watt power supply and those yeah. are going to be standard atx so it's it's a it's a bad road to try to go okay. some of the proprietary stuff um, but you can harvest parts if you're going to get some stuff for free or they're going to throw away stuff at work and it's a i5 or i7 third or fourth gen processor and they're going to throw it in the garbage and no, oh, I'll take that and then try to match it up with a cheap MOBO because from the best MOBO that's out there and a cheap one, as long as it's stable and it has what you need, I, yeah. whatever. And, and I but would what, imagine what a, that... What a frame difference. Most I mean, of those those chips, like the chip you got is in a kit. It's probably not a... You can't pro- no, overclock no, it, no. so it's just it's forty five ninety. It's forty five ninety. Yeah, so, so then at three, that six or three three or something. Yeah, so at that point, then like you don't even need like you definitely yeah. don't need a fancy motherboard. I, I got the fancy motherboard just because it was going to look cool. And yeah, my and because uh, it's fun. I, I would and imagine, it, yeah, you, yeah, you were able to get like like almost any motherboard probably is similar in pricing at that point, but yeah, well, that's the weird thing too. When things get older, 
then the price starts going back up because they're like, oh, you need it. You really, if you want an 1150 c- CPU or motherboard, yeah. you must you must really need it. Yeah. Well, yeah, they, they that's PC companies are notorious for that. Go look up DDR2 RAM for a server, and it, it's 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 as much no, as I, a, I had like the a, same a, problem. A with, even yeah, my DDR3 RAM for my 3770K yeah. was like that, and also like even just like when I. When I uh, when I did mess up my processor a little bit during delitting, like trying to find another thirty seven seventy k, yeah, it was like, dude, I don't want to spend this much money on what's, this. What I'd socket, rather just is that what socket? Like it's an eleven fifty five. Eleven fifty five, yeah. So like uh, literally, like I mean, you can't like, yeah, just everything about it sucked. Like, yeah, yeah. it makes more sense at some point they if you're going too far you, back to just get something have, newer. They're, 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 yeah, they're one, it's becomes like it's out of production, and two, it's like it's like they know you need it, yep. so they're like, Oh, you're gonna you'll pay, we'll get yeah. you to pay. So, oh well, but if you can get a good price and you know, no, put it together in part price, no, that's, that's so any yeah. listeners out there that have a, a have a have a, a fully functioning uh parts for uh 1155 uh hit us up with an email no just kidding dude I'm, I'm starting to think i need to pick up one of those cheap 1070s now that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying on ebay man if 200 for a 1070 yeah that's my first upgrade when i get wife approval and the 960 is shown its age and my daughter starts complaining about you know uh it's uh it needs to be whatever or we start feeling the growing pains i'm either gonna be in a position if it's in a year from now and the 2080 is the the thing to have yeah and the price is not insane, then yeah. I would be fine with, you know, I, I, go, I put a 28 in my PC and then move the 1080 down to the spare. Sure. Um, no, because then that's but, like a new computer. I mean, you're... But yeah. for 200 bucks, if you're building a, a spare computer and you want a second player computer, a 1070, geez. Again, first world problems. It's amazing. Yeah. Totally doable. All right. That's my heart out. I got to go pick up my two kids. So All right. So... I'm, yeah, I we're had, we are done then. Yeah, we no, done. it was definitely a good episode. So Great. thanks everyone I for listening. Know.